Okay, folks are uh, slowly uh, filtering in here. I think we can uh, get started. Uh, hello and welcome to the QAD West Coast User Group Spring Webinar Series. Pleased to welcome Don Lindsay of 32Soft here today to uh, talk about managing QAD access security. Uh, before I introduce Don, I just want to um, mention we do have one more uh, uh, webinar coming up in our uh, spring series next week. On Wednesday, June 6th, we'll have uh, Carlos Colmenares of Sungate Solutions here to do a uh, session on the effective QAD administrator. You can read more about this uh, upcoming uh, webinar on the website, wecug.com, under the meetings section. And uh, I will point out we uh, will be making all of our spring webinar recordings available to WeCUG members uh, in the coming week or so. So be sure to check the website for that. Um, these are all free for WeCUG members to attend. So um, you can sign up for next week's uh, seminar on the website. I also want to mention um, about our upcoming fall conference. We have a, a great location secured for the end of October in Oceanside, California, a beautiful oceanfront resort called the Seabird. Uh, we have a great program coming together. Um, call for speakers is still out, but uh, we have a few session slots still available and uh, registration is open as well. And you can find out more about the fall conference on the website, wecug.com, but be sure to mark your calendars for October 30th and 31st for the uh, fall conference. And with that, let's uh, get things started here with our uh, guest speaker today. I'm pleased to welcome Don Lindsay, business analyst with 32 Soft, who's going to be given a, a great session here on managing QAD access security. And with that, I will turn it over to Don. Welcome, Don. Thank you, uh, Jeff. Uh, let me see if I can uh, get this thing uh, processed here. Zoom is always a challenge, but uh, can you see my screen now? Any luck, Jeff? No screen share yet. No screen share yet. Let me uh, go back here and share that. There we go. You're good. Is that... Uh, is that good? Yep, we're good. Okay, all right. Well, we apologize for the uh, technical issues that uh, our dear Zoom always has uh, in store for us. Good afternoon. Hope we're all having a great 2023. Glad you could join us this afternoon for a quick discussion about security. My name's Don Lindsay. I'm an educator, trainer, consultant for 30 Susoft. My background includes uh, about 35 years of uh, MRP, ERP industry software. I've taught uh, Apex classes at Cal State Fullerton, uh, Mount San Antonio Fullerton College, Learning Tree, and I've done uh, over 20 Explorers, Apex conferences, Midwest, West Coast, uh, IBF, et cetera. Uh, I've also had the pleasure of being in over 75 different facilities and organizations helping to assist in various operations of supply chain projects over the years. Also, just to mention it, uh, today is my 54th anniversary. My dear wife and I have been married for 54 years, so wish us a happy, happy. I wanted to thank Jeff and the West Coast User Group for asking uh, Tanya and Amanda and myself and Carlos for participating in this first ever West Coast Spring 2023 online webinar series. Uh, we're on the cusp of technology here. So uh, these were some of the papers that we presented at uh, MUG in Cleveland, and that's uh, where we get the data. Tanya and Amanda introduced their organizations. I thought I'd take just a minute to talk about 32Soft. 32Soft was founded by Alex Kim in 2001 and is dedicated to developing uh, data-driven applications interfaced with Excel over the web. They're based solutions for specific real world challenges in QAD. And we all know QAD has, has many challenges. So please visit the 32Soft website for more information. And let's talk about quality requirements. Today, I'd like to talk 
uh, about something that's been in the news uh, a lot lately, and uh, that is security. Your company grows and changes, maintaining security all levels of the organization is becoming more and more critical. Neglecting that data access can do irreparable harm to your organization's reputation and bottom line. You can even get hefty fines for non-compliance of SOX requirements. To remain SOX compliant, you must manage access rights during onboarding, role changing, and offboarding. If your company has a centralized IT team with multiple manufacturing and distribution centers, they can be constantly overburdened with onboarding new members, disabling new ones who have left the company, tightening, untightening access for existing, correcting uh, wrong passwords. But most importantly, IT and finance are saddled with the responsibility of keeping track of these requests to make sure they're duly approved by management and executed accurately and expeditiously. Security is a very serious business in today's world. Controlling it is a challenge to the business. So here's a few things I'd like to cover today. We'd like to talk about some of the general concepts around security in QED. This includes SOX, audit trail, segregation of duties. And then I'd like to cover just a quick demonstration of a 32 soft utility for security control in complex site implementations. As always, there are many definitions and terms associated with a subject like security that we should be familiar with. Remember, if I use a term or a phrase that you don't know the meaning of, please look it up on Google or you can use ChatGPT now uh, or go to the knowledge base on the QAD website or send us an email. As I previously pointed out, no one calling themselves a professional investigates a subject properly unless they also, also investigate the history of that functionality and the individuals who contributed to that taxonomy. Individuals who contributed to computer security include Bob Thomas, who wrote the first computer virus. And I think we all remember John McAfee. Boy, he was an interesting character. And John von Neumann, who wrote the theory of self reducing automata, the first book on computer viruses. Here's a list of some of the other fascinating backgrounds in security that you might want to investigate. Names like Hewitt, Gates, Sugat, Packard. You could use ChatGP to look these up. Here's the differential engine, the precursor of the computer invented by Babbage in 1832. At this point, security was not really a known circumstance. In 1945, ENIAC was developed. This was the first automated general purpose electronic decibel digital computer that had all these features in one package. It's referred to as Turning Complete. Another guy you should look up, Alan Turning, uh, was very influential in computer science. Now that uh, ENIAC is invented, uh, security starts to become a concern. And then in 1969, the ARPANET was developed. And just think, that was just 54 years ago. That was the year I got married, because today is my anniversary. The first worldwide package twist network with distributed controls. It was one of the first networks to implement TCP IP protocol suite to organize network protocols. So now we've had many possibilities for security issues. Since we'll be speaking primarily about computer security today, it's uh, interesting to note that computer crime was only first defined in a formal process with the publication of the Department of Defense Trusted Computer System Validation Criteria in just 2005. The document covered such areas as policy, accountability, assurance, documentation, minimal, discretionary, mandatory, and verified protection. Think Mr. Trump, Mr. Biden, and Mr. Pence, apparently violating these guidelines. Everyone should understand the content <coughs> of required security regulations. At the very least, you'd think the president and the vice president should. In the early 2002s, there were several financial scandals involving felonious accounting practices, which rocketed Wall Street 
and the financial industry. WorldCom, second largest telephone company at the time, was caught cheating. Tyco, Dennis Kowalski, and Mark Schultz stole almost $600 million from investors. And ultimately, Enron's Kenneth Lay and Jeff Skilling displayed their skills in the best movie of I've ever seen on the subject, Enron, the smartest guys in the room. Another good research project. To combat these legendary crimes, the Senators Paul Sarbanes and Representative Mike Oxley co-authored the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, or what we know as SOX in 2002. SOX is a United States federal law that mandates certain practices in the financial record keeping and reporting for corporations, which was passed in 2002 intended to guard against these problems. There are six primary sections of Sarbanes-Oxley that address disclosure controls, improper influence on the conduct of audits, disclosures in periodic reporting off-balance items, such as operating lists letters of credit, assessment of internal controls, how do you control your internal uh, process flow, and uh, then finally, criminal penalties for influencing U.S. agency investigation and proper administration, again, hark to Mr. Trump, and civil actions to predict uh, protect against uh, whistleblower uh, issues. Internal controls and procedures are put in place in organizations to ensure continued reliability of accounting systems. Accuracy and reliability are paramount in the accounting world because without accurate record keeping, managers can't make fully informed decisions and financial reports can cause errors. There are seven categories, uh, each designed to prevent fraud and identity errors before they become a problem. Think the Silicon Valley Bank collapse just in March uh, 10th of this year, as an example. There are seven categories. The first of these are seg uh, separation of duties. This involves splitting responsibilities for bookkeeping, deposits, reporting uh, from signing checks. The second is Accounting system access control, controlling access to uh, different parts of the accounting system via passwords, lockouts, et cetera, uh, can help prevent uh, security leaks. We're going to see that even increase more with the use of biometric security, such as fingerprints, facial, voice, iris, palm, uh, finger patterns. These are all coming on the horizon. Physical audits, such as hand counting cash, taking physical inventory, which we in this supply chain are very familiar with, uh, these all can, can uh, help us with security in the financial areas. Standardizing documents for financial transactions, such as invoices, uh, internal requests, inventory receipts, travel expenses. These can help uh, maintain a consistency across time when searching for discrepancies in the accounting system. Using a double entry bookkeeping, aka Frau Luca Pacoli, look him up on uh, ChatGPT, he invented the double entry bookkeeping system. And so if you do double entry bookkeeping daily, weekly, this keeps the books in balance and ensures financial responsibility. Occasionally, accounting reconciliations can assure that balances in your accounting system match the balances in the accounts held by others, such as banks, suppliers, customer credits, etc. And then finally, authorized approval and requirements. And we'll talk extensively about this particular uh, internal control procedure in regards to uh, electronic signatures, audit trails, et cetera. IT policies and procedures should be in place and documented well in controlled areas of security, program development, change management, and computer operations. 
These policies need to be reviewed and updated by IT management and financial management, at least on an annual basis, according to part of the SOX audit process. Computer security is a term used to describe protecting your system from malicious attacks, unauthorized information disclosures, theft, damage to hardware, software, or data, or even to the disruption or misdirection of services. The professional certification CISSP, Certified Information System Security Professional, is just like the CPIM recognized by the supply chain. My little brother was a CISSP in the Navy, and my grandson has a uh, certification. Good certification to investigate these days. As of January 22, there were 152,632 individuals who held this certification worldwide. It's becoming more and more prevalent in the security system. For QID, 36.3.24 sets the basic parameters for your security in your system. Includes such elements as uh, idle time uh, timeouts, uh, enforced license count, minimum access failures, email systems, et cetera, et cetera. All of these uh, must be examined and control settings adjusted at least on a yearly uh, basis. You could use 36.3.13.8 site security to specify user IDs or roles that can update data associated with a specific site. In QAD, you can even take security all the way down to the field level in most maintenance programs. This is a very effective control mechanism for data access. However, it is extremely maintenance intensive, uh, which we'll cover later in our discussions about mass update capabilities. 36.3.1 is the bottom line for individuals, and individuals are security. The annotation of users in QED's user, we won't have time to go over all the fields and impacts of each, but needless to say, you should read the user guide for QED security for your version of QED. 36.3.3, user password maintenance. This allows you to update your system's password as well as view information associated with user ideas. Passwords are becoming passe. If you've read the, doc, uh, the news lately, we see such things as multi-factor uh, authentication, uh, biometric authentication, hardware tokens, mobile device uh, password uh, authentications. These are all new tools that are going to be seen up across the horizon. The 36.3.7 uh, update can... Uh, allow you to enforce security by rules for transfers, purchase orders, sales orders, distribution orders, and some of the service and support functionality. The 36.3.4 user domain and entity access maintenance defines user privileges for domains and entities. Remember, you always need to set at least one default uh, domain. Before implementing any security model, you should develop a detailed security plan that describes how many users and roles will be utilized within your system to satisfy you the business requirements of your organization. This takes a lot of thought and investigation into who is who, what jobs do they do, how you want to organize your team, and requires constant update uh, as the employee population changes. As stated, it is important to understand how users relate to roles and roles relate to menus via permissions to membership. You need to understand all of the menu structure, all 4,900 menus in QAD, all the roles that you've defined, and all of the individuals in your organization. So it's a pretty uh, complex process. The 36.3.6.1 Role create is used to define roles in your system. You should define as many roles as required to model your business according to SOX requirements. 36.3.6.5 roles permissions assigns menus to roles. Role-based access control limits users to existing 
or executing only system menus that belong to their assigned roles or role. Remember, there are over 4,900 menus in QAD. 36.3.6.6, role membership maintained, defines the association between the role, defining your system, and a system user. You will need to indicate the role, which is the user's default role. Here you assign people to roles who will use menus for that role. As we mentioned earlier, segregation of duties is one of those primary tools of internal control. Segregation requires that you separate individuals from any potential risk associated with financial activities. Common segregation of duty would be exampled by an AP clerk who would not be responsible for accounting and be responsible for signing checks. There should be also elevated security defined for network processing, ERP, such as QED, user stocks, 401k, E-Trade, payroll, ADP, et cetera. So what is segregation of duties? It's an in-kernel control designed to prevent errors and fraud by ensuring that at least two individuals are responsible for separate parts of the business. It involves breaking down tasks within a process, process that might reasonably be completed by a single person, but are separated into more than one task. All databases are affected, test, validation, development, how many databases you have. <laughs> Although it improves security, uh, breaking down tasks into separate compromise can negatively impact business efficiency and it can also increase uh, costs. Auditors expect or concern that segregation of duty categories and roles are appropriately designed. I'm sure some of you had had the pleasure of dealing with auditors, from et etc. They want the conflicts defined in the segregation of duty matrix, which we'll talk about in just a little bit later. They're also concerned that the segregation of duty policy exceptions are appropriately documented and that non-system mitigating controls are sufficient to overcome system policy exceptions. You also are tasked with having user provisioning that onboards resources to ERP and other systems, offboards resources when employees leave the organization, and most importantly, that evidence exists with the business approval for system access. There are four primary components to SOD. There's SOD cat categories, which is a collection of QED security roles. SOD matrix, this is a relationship between the categories and defines conflictions between categories. Policies exceptions is at the user uh, definition allowing access to menus that are not included in the uh, conflicting SOD categories and role exclusion. This defines roles that do not require uh, conflict management. SOD is a very flexible system, but it requires much thought and planning. There are five main functions needed for QED SOD. Uh, SOD permissions maintain, membership maintain, role to exclude from SOD, SOD policy ex exceptions, and SOD configuration. It's also a tool to help you import and export. The setup of segregation of duties is and can be uh, somewhat intimidating, but you have to activate it, uh, create your categories, assign categories to functions, uh, do the category, category compatibility in the matrix, set up security to find your roles, review the violations, review the SOD logs, resolve any rule violations, and then define your policies. The configuration uh, in 36. 3.27.14 allows you to set up and activate segregation to duty. When you do this, it's recommended that you don't or you deactivate the SOD rule checking. Uh, by doing this, it allows you to uh, do some experimentation. And then when you get it set up properly, then you can activate it in the production database. SOD categories 
are created in 36.3.27.1.1. You add as many categories as you need. There are some templates and uh, examples of categories that you could have. <clears throat> and then you run these against your SOD matrix. And there is also a 36.3.27.1.5 SOD category Excel integration if you'd like to use that. The SOD category membership maintain. This is where you maintain the association between the application resource, that is the activity, and the user. Policy exceptions are used to create and maintain policy exceptions that define and give specific user access to pairs of resources that are not compatible with the SOD policy. The role exclusion allows you to indicate that a particular role is exempt from SOD rules and check. This option is particularly useful for roles up associated with uh, super user accounts, et cetera. The SOD rule exclusion is the highest level of SOD policy exclusion and should be uh, carefully used to satisfy the auditors. First thing the auditors are gonna ask you is for a report on the violations for SOD functionality. The 36.3.27.9 is that report. Give it to them, make the auditors uh, happy. There's also the 36.3.27.6 SOD log viewer, which lets you view all the changes that impact segregation of duties over time, such as rule vibrations and actions uh, that rectified rule violations. The 36.3.27.1, the segregation of the duty is a complicated process and the analysis and due diligence in the process and preparation of the data. Most of this can take place outside of QED. You use the SOD export and import for this, and then you load that back into QAD and allow QAD then to keep track of those uh, processes. The Code of Federal Regulations, 21 CFR Part 11, mandates that users be held accountable for their actions. Oh my God, there's a statement. Users must not be able to reasonably deny their responsibility for actions attributable to their logon account. This is accomplished by audit trails and electronic signatures. Electronic signatures is a way to capture approvals electronically to validate that approval was granted. We won't spend a lot of time on electronic signatures, very complex subject. We'll have a, a labor, uh, webinar later this uh, summer to uh, talk about that, but beware, uh, electronic signatures is, is highly intrusive. Audit trails is a process of valid, evaluating the organization's practices and safeguards of electronic information for loss, damage, unintended disclosure, or denial of availability. A typical audit record involves information that helps you identify who made the change, which program made the change, when the change was made, and what the change was. Another audit favorite. As with any QAD functionality, QAD requires a fair amount of setup from definition of policies to configuration dip database, uh, indicating which fields are part of the audit process and more. The first step of the audit trail is this setup is to find the audit databases that are gonna be used to house the audit data or the audit trail data. You use 36, 12, 13, 11 to define those uh, parameters. The 36, 12, 13, three audit configuration enables auditing on selected tables. This requires some thought about application database, selection patterns, action uh, buttons, et cetera. The selection of tables that need to be traceable is critical, as this defines your audit process. As a selection of tables, there are some recommended populations, but it is entirely up to your organization and your relationship with your audit company and their interpretation of SOX requirements. The entity diagram, which I hope most of you are familiar with, is the tool you should use to define which 
fields in which tables are going to need to be uh, traceable. The 3612.13.7 audit configuration field level defines the specific fields that you want audited. Be very cognizant of which fields and tables you need or want to be traced. Is it going to be changed? Even if you track it, are you uh, track it? Are you going to view it? Is somebody going to look at it? And be cautious because the size of the data tables in the audit database can get very big very quickly. And also, it's hard to change your mind with audit trails. Here are some uh, helpful documents uh, in setting up audit trails you might be interested in. So now that we've looked at several aspects of security in QED, including user roles, segregation of duty, audit trails, we recognize that the maintenance of these fields and processes are critical to the adherence to SOX requirements. But all of these functions require extensive amounts of maintenance to systems, especially in organizations with multiple dom domains, uh, locations, many users. It can be costly and overwhelming for the finance and IT organizations to deal with the resources and processes required to ensure compliance. Let's look at a tool that might assist in the maintenance of this vast amount of data required for security. So how do you manage this without losing your mind? Well, 32Soft has designed a web application, the QED User Security Management System, or QUS that makes quick work of this process involved in keeping uh, your data access secure. The QUS system is a single place where IT and finance staff can manage all user security requests across multiple production and test environments. This application isn't for users. It's primarily for IT, auditors, functional approvers, plant management, and segregation of duty administrators. Application is not intended for normal users. However, they're included in the notification process. QED has several beneficial features. It has a validatable approval form. You can create new users with their initial access request. You can access all user access requests. There's manager, functional, SOD, extra plant level approvers are all included. QUS checks for SOD conflicts. And lastly, QAD implements automatically in multiple environments. There are several steps involved in such a significant and multifaceted function as user security. QUS requires that you define sites and their connections. There are several options that you need to determine the users, their roles, any special. Uh, security issues in regards to segregation of duty, categories, approvers. The control file, as with everything in QED, everything starts off with a control file. This is 99.24, and you can name that menu whatever you want. Christian just picked 99.24 for this one. This defines timeouts, departments, approval, emails, domains. Uh, this is basically the administrative requirements for the system. There's a site maintenance in QUS, you need to define sites, but you don't necessarily need to use the sites that we're familiar with in 1.1.13, site maintenance. <laughs> you can create it any way you want. You, you could have a site XYZ that might have site 10 and 20 underneath it. The elements are site, domain, what type of site it is, descriptions, servers, and port activity. The QUS user maintenance, in this case 9799.7, defines who is going to be a user in the system, what their interfaces are, and how the application is going to recognize them. There's a user ID, names, company, department, mobile, email, who their manager is, etc. The QUS role maintenance defines how users are going to be processed through the security system via roles. This is determined primarily by role functionality. That is what group of individuals or functions are defined by your organization's security schema. The QUS role maintenance, uh, you can define alternates. Uh, you can define uh, if somebody's gonna be on vacation and then those people can uh, do 
the maintenance of the system just as if they were the regular manager. Security groups determine the flow of the QED or the QUS security organization. This is going to require uh, detailed specifications for your organization, how you deal with uh, security. There's a QUS exception maintenance. This uh, exception maintenance depends how rules are manipulated by the function of approval, emails, SOD, extra, and plant management and process uh, distribution. The QUS exception report gives you a report of that so that you can easily uh, analyze what exceptions are active in your QUS system. And if your organization doesn't have the standard SOD functionality that we reviewed earlier, the QUS system allows for the requirement statements of segregation of duties as required by SOX. In the course of processing a data intensive user, user community, it's inevitable that users and issues will arise dealing with dozens to hundreds of users with 10 to 20 sites in multiple domains. That's a lot of users. QUS has functionality to allow the correct modification of requests and re-implementation of requests through the system that automatically generates required emails and documents for audits. Again, auditors love this kind of stuff. As indicated, the QUS user security, QUS, can both initiate a new user and forward that automatically to, mod to management. The approval process can be queued, modified, and executed for all requests. The flow is to first create the request, route it to the manager, manager approves, goes to a site approver. After site approver, it can go to SOD. After SOD, it can go to an extra approval if required. And then once everybody has signed off from manager to functional to SOD to plant management, it's ready for implementation. And the last step is then the automatically update of those data fields. So firstly, the requester signs into the QAD system. This is the main screen of QUS. We'll call it uh, the request tab for something better. You can name it whatever you'd like. The screen will need some practice, but it's modifiable to your organization's requirements. Uh, tab, sequence, titles, etc. The selection request can be defined by request or request range, date range, status. You can also export this to Excel. As we saw from the process flows, you can create a request or add a new user to QUS. If you add a new user, the system requires a name. Uh, this can be interfaced with Active Directory, uh, so it can read the Active Directory tables and input those into QUS. You need to choose a type of uh, employee. You can enter remarks and the badge number, which will eventually become the QID ID and uh, email for communication. For each request, you can select by site, type of database, domain, new, or request. Uh, again, the security groups define the request and the rules and you can use type and site selection. As you save the QS record, it does some validations in the background. If there is an error in the process, it will highlight that in red. And if there are any uh, SOD uh, uh, issues that uh, the system recognizes, it will also uh, highlight that in orange. Uh, you can also note columns for check process of SOD conflict, extra uh, approver suppliers, et cetera. And after the initial input, the next step is the system automatically sends an email to the requester's manager. Mark back to our discussions of setup and email just, uh, setup with a subject line that says, please approve this request. Makes it pretty obvious. The system provides all the requisite information in one place and a link, an online approval link for the user's or the manager's uh, use. From the URL, you just click the manager. It signed, uh, you in, allows you to sign into the system with your password. 
uh, and back to the request tab, this now shows at, uh, in this case, it shows at manager one and any other approvals that are defined by the rules and rules in the QUS system. Managers can approve or deny the request. The denial is routed back to the requester based on rules. Again, auditors love that kind of stuff. Managers complete appropriate notes and reasons for documentation, aka SOX, quick and easy. Back to the requester tab, the value at now shows the site functional approver. Once the manager is approved, he's moved off the list, and now you can send it off to uh, the email for the site functional approver. They can click on the link. Uh, this logs them into the system, just need their password. The site functional approver can again deny or approve the process. Site functional uh, approver can uh, indicate reasons for approval, and then it successfully tells him that that is processed. At the request tab, the at now shows it's changed to SOD1 based on the rules and the roles. There's an email that's sent out to the SOD administrator. Uh, so you can automatically send that with a request. The SOD administrator signs on to the system. Uh, in this particular scenario, SOD can't approve. All they can do is modify the SOD requirements. If they want to, they can send it on to a plant manager for further approval, or they can deny the request. Once they have eliminated the conflict, the SOD administrator can approve or deny. And the request tab has now moved to the extra actions based on the rules and the roles. If the rules demand that multiple sites be notified, and whoever's dealt with user knows this is a major uh, ugly, both site and functional approvers will deny or approve the request. The system will correctly process and email all participants. If the extra approver is required for a defined group, the system will automatically route for approval in the extra in conjunction with the SOD approval process. At this step, the QAD ID has been generated, but not yet created in QAD because the request has not been completely approved yet. When the SOD extra or plant manager approves, they can all see the previous requests, the notes, the approvals, and at this point, the plant manager can approve uh, the request or uh, deny it. The request tab now views shows it blank with the statuses of both extra approved and plant approved, and it's therefore ready for implementation. The implementation job for the application runs in batch at night, or you can run it uh, manually, it doesn't uh, matter. The job goes into all sites and runs the implementation routines based on the batch file defined for updates. When the implementation routine is updated, the system automatically submits an approval notification emailed to the user indicating his new user ID along with additional security related process information. There are three primary sets of data automatically provided by the system at implementation, that is, the email that we just saw to the user, a QED implementation log, and the detail of each QED ID request. Again, auditors love it. If there are any errors in the implementation of sites, the request is marked as partial and IQT can investigate fix as they didn't set the request for re-implementation. When it's gone through the re-implementation, the status changes to re-implement. So 32Soft has designed a web application, the QED User Security or QUS, to make quick work of the process involved in keeping your uh, data access secure. The QUS system is a single place where IT and finance staff can manage all QED security requests across multiple tests and other environments. Can you compare this to the spreadsheet hard copy document, sign, lose at a desk process that most of us go through now. So what have we covered today? We've talked about SOC security, 
user definitions, roles, permissions, audit trails, segregation of duty, and the QUS system. Security is a complex subject regarding a lot of understanding and experience. Here are a couple of resources I would recommend you to follow to increase your skills in supply chain security. There's the QD forma, forums. Lots of experienced users out to help you with questions. I use this quite often. Note the forum, the security is one of the primary uh, areas of the forum. The user groups, the West Coast user group, Midwest, Sub, Southeast, have excellent discussion groups, job resource boards. There's the QED knowledge base. I use this just about every day. There's the QED, QED library, document library. This is my go-to after F1 help. And then there's the QED learning center, a great place to learn about QED in a class setting. For additional assistance on the 32Soft website, there is a list of URLs complete with clickable links for all sites, documents, records, and sites that I use for this presentation. Just click the URL on the 32 website and you're brought to a list of URLs for various subjects that you can use to help better understand the use of data in your ERP system. And I have recently become addicted to chat GPT. Uh, an infinite amount of information is out there for your uh, help. We hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick overview of QED security functionality. and. Uh, how one might use the QED or QUS functionality to help deal with electronic update of required data tables via emails and cable definitions in QED. Your ability to control security and provide required audit trails is critical in today's electronic environment on the internet. Users expect security to be properly handled and proper understanding and setup of security is the responsibility of IT management, operations, and finance. Please contact myself, Denise, or Alex if you think you have any questions regarding security after the presentation. Thank you so much, and back to you, Jeff.